welcome back dude hi how's it going man dude it is going very very good man um man I, i'm stoked so i think a little background is always needed for these and i think especially this one um yeah yeah because we I, I was just thinking about like this whole kind of path and it is it is pretty crazy man um yeah i reached out to you way back like you were the first guy in this mousetrap world who I just randomly wrote over Instagram when a, <laughs> <laughs> when Autonomous, the single, not the not the full release, but the Autonomous single got released on Mousetrap. And yeah. I knew no one, man. I, at that time, I was just like, I, I knew nothing. I knew no one. <laughs> and and I, I hit you up on Instagram. I was like, dude, uh, it's so cool you've released on Mousetrap. It would be the coolest thing in the world if you did like YouTube videos where you could like uh, you know, work on projects or show how you work on. You're like, hey, funny enough, I do that <laughs> once a week. Yeah, 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 man. So, so this has just been like, I mean, from the get go, just chatting with you and stuff, man. And I'm just, as always, super stoked to do this. And, and dude, thank you for coming on. Absolutely, man. And I was honored the first time, and I'm honored again to be back on the show. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. And this is a good time to say a couple things. A first, I apologize because. You and I were going to link up in Phoenix. Like, when was that? It's like, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. And I got sick. I was like on the couch for like a few days. So shit happens though. But hey, we're here. Oh, well, we're doing it. Yeah. Next time I'm in Phoenix. Exactly. Exactly. I always have a great time in Phoenix. It's a great city and great electronic music scene. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm feeling very fortunate to be here. It's getting a little hot right now, but you came at the right time, man. I think it was raining when you were here over that weekend too, right? Yeah, it was wonderful weather, actually. Yeah, yeah. Both- At least for the first half of it, I think. Right. Second half was pretty warm, but yeah, it was great. It gets warm. It gets warm, but but um, but um, yeah, man. And and another thing, I always like kind of think about, you know, preparing for these and, and, and just kind of getting a sense of, of everything across the music you've put out, what you're doing as an artist. And it's, it's funny, man. It like kind of struck me when I've been kind of promoting these episodes and talking with people and, and talking with people who are really fans of the mousetrap record label and fans of the releases on, on the, the record label and such. And dude, yeah. you're the guy who comes up the most. I swear you, oh, no you do, man. You do. People always say they're like, Julian is the nicest guy. He gets back to me. He, <sighs> yeah, he, yeah. And, and he helps me with projects and it's so cool, man. And I really want to kind of I honestly dig into that a bit today because you have this really, really cool community of people that follow your music, um, mm -hmm. chat with you all the time. You've like built up, I think, unlike any other producer I, I really see out there, you've built up this community and it's so, so cool. Right. Yeah. And that's that's always been like a, a thing with me from the start. I, I started in the whole music industry from the perspective of a teacher. Mm -hmm. Um and when you're a teacher, you have a community of students. And um, that's kind of followed me through even now kind of pushing my focuses towards like solo musician, touring musician, whatever. Um, that whole sense of community and being engaged with my fans and my supporters. And like, I don't even consider my fans fans. I consider them friends yep. more than anything. And, and that's always been like a mindset I've carried since the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Because looking at the it's it's funny man because i bring it up so frequently on other episodes that you're like this this kind of archetype for what i think the music industry is turning into because it's no longer this place where there's labels that manage the artists and you never get to talk with the artist they're just like this this person behind the scenes that you yeah. fantasize about meeting one day like you rather than than kind of living in in that realm you turn the whole thing up on its on a, on its head and just you're engaging with all your fans. You have the Discord, you have the uh, the Patreon where you're of course teaching. So it's just it's so cool, man. And I see this whole path of music as a profession changing. And you're I think you're architecting out this really interesting path because it's not about the 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 money coming in maybe from streams which is great if it if it does but right. you know spotify pays you know spotify pays with spotify pays so you're doing this thing where it's like really focused around the community and supporting these up and coming artists teaching them and then that's how you're you're pulling this whole thing off and doing it. it's awesome yeah absolutely and and um i've kind of got this core group of people that um 
you know, I've, I've mentored from the beginning or, or, you know, have been supporting from the beginning. And I'm actually in the next few months, I'm trying to start like a sort of collective mm-hmm. of, of my most, you know, the proudest people I've worked with and, and the people I consider my closest friends. And, um, they're all like members of that community that you keep talking about that have really stuck there from the beginning and, you know, just engaged. Yeah. Um, but I'm really excited to get that going. Yeah. Where, where do you see that going? So when you speak collective, is that just going to be, or what do you, what do you kind of foresee happening with that? Um, well, essentially I'm, I'm more than just a musician, I think. And I think a lot of people are, and and my whole idea of a collective is more than just music. It's creativity. (laughs) Um, I don't want to spill too much about it. Okay, that's fine. (laughs) Uh, But but the whole idea is a multimedia arts collective of creative people Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's not just musicians. Um, It could be people who do painting and and poetry and stuff like that. And, you know, just like a, I guess, a group of people that, you know, do that sort of thing that I really respect. And that's, that's like something that I've been developing over the past few months. You'll hear more about that soon. Cool. I love it, man. Yeah. And I just think it's it's really it's really cool that you focus so much time on that piece, on the factor of just not not yeah. the producing piece, but everything else around it, the community, the people. And man, it just almost seems like today it's just the perfect like a it's the perfect time for this to happen because with tools like Absolutely. Instagram, you can ch- I mean it's it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, and that was like the whole purpose of the collective is to support people of my community that I really want to, you know, lend my, I guess, spotlight towards, Mm -hmm. you know, I can shoot it at them and, um, you know, showcase their abilities and stuff. And, you know, I'm always trying to do that anyway. Yeah. If I see something cool, I'll shout it out on Twitter. Oh yeah, dude. It's always been who I am. I, I, I know that for sure, man. I remember watching, there was a stream of yours I watched. This must've been like a year ago now where that dude Watney submitted his first mm-hmm. track on your stream and you're like, dude, I don't have anything to say. It's perfect. And you're like, I'm going to send this to Anjuna people now. Cause it's like, <laughs> so you do, man, your support. It's, it's so cool. Cause, um, you know, I know everyone knows that feeling of starting out and not knowing what the hell to do. And you're kind of that first person. If people reach out to you or learn about what you're doing through YouTube or Instagram or, or, or the YouTube streams, whatever it is, it's like, you're kind of this first step where it's like, oh man, there's someone doing it. Someone will talk with me. Someone's putting YouTube videos out where I can learn, man. So it's super cool. And that's the, yeah, it's always been my model. I, I always want to try to support mm-hmm. the people who are trying to be creative and, you know, create things. Yeah. That's that, that, that's what I was like when I was young and when I was trying to get into it. And I, I just want to help people that are doing that. Yep. So yeah. if I can perpetuate art as a whole forward, that's like my goal more than anything. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would imagine that, I mean, everyone remembers those times, just like when you probably started producing, started the YouTube channel, it starts with so little, you know, you just, yeah. you got to just put in the time and, and, it, and slowly over time it grows and things pick up and you learn more and more, but it, it takes a lot of time and having that that first place to start and, and reach out to people who you know um, will give you good feedback is uh, so, so crucial. It's it's awesome. Um, yeah, that's a really, really tough point, uh, especially now, like starting from zero. Um, and that's why I really like the community aspect where like it's a group of supportive people mm-hmm. trying to have a common goal. And, you know, it helps when you're trying to get through that first 100 followers. Yeah. You know, it's really difficult. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, and to have like the support of a community or family of trying people trying to do the same stuff is, is always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I would think, well, actually I do. I was thinking about this. What, what was that process then when you started? I mean, you, I'm guessing started producing first and then the YouTube channel kind of came in parallel where you're like, Hey, I could do some kind of tutorials around this stuff or yeah. how did that start? It's really funny. I, I, I started as DJing, um, I just was obsessed with DJs for some reason, like in middle school, uh-huh. middle school, elementary school. Um, apologies for all the traffic noise. Ah, I, cool. I live in LA. <laughs> um, uh, I, I started DJing actually. And I, and I, I uh, learned, you know, like the essentials of DJing and, and I was using some software and stuff. I actually made my own like DJ controller <laughs> stuff. That was fun um, when I was very young. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
I started in that and I actually created it my first tutorial. I've told this story a few times. Um, my first tutorial on YouTube was actually because I was doing YouTube before that's like vloggy stuff uh-huh. like everyone was. But the first tutorial I did on YouTube was this virtual DJ tutorial I made for my friend um, because I was DJing parties and stuff like, you know, class party or whatever. Um, and they wanted to learn how to do it. So I made that tutorial and it went pretty viral on YouTube at the time Damn, accidentally yeah. um like i think it's at like half a million views oh, now or something holy shit. Yeah. yeah yeah wow and i think a lot of those views are old views too uh-huh. so it kind of puts into perspective um but that was like my first big video it was probably like 50 to 100 thousand views like not that many uh-huh. but it was a lot when you start with zero yeah yeah um and that kind of got my channel rolling and i followed suit with that with some uh videos like similar kind of like how to dj and like with four tracks instead of just two mm-hmm. or like um how to use the effects in whatever dj program and um while i was working on that i kind of gained an interest in uh, you know music production uh through like i was using this proprietary daw from behringer for the first like few months or whatever and then i went to garage band and then to logic mm-hmm. and eventually i landed on ableton which i i knew about from the dj world because i know that ableton is predominantly or it started as a dj program um and then kind of migrated into the production world but um as those two kind of aligned like i was doing the dj tutorials and i was falling into production and i heard about ableton from the dj world and i decided to try it for production that's when the Ableton stuff started. So then I shifted from DJing tutorials into Ableton tutorials, like general ones. Mm -hmm. And then it became Ableton tutorials and that's where I've sat. And that's also how I got into Ableton. Yeah. So do you, um, and ever since it's been Ableton tutorials. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Do you, would you say what, what kind of time frame was this? Like how long ago was it? Would you say you're kind of early to the game of doing the tutorial stuff on YouTube or were there already a lot of people doing it at the time? When I was making DJ tutorials, there was not a lot of guys doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, there was DJ ravine. Uh, he was really cool. I looked up to him a lot. Um, uh, Vespers, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sadowick was around. Uh, Multiplier was also around. Um, but I was pretty new to, or I was, it was a pretty new scene uh-huh. um, when I first started doing Ableton videos, and especially the DJ ones. The DJ ones I was doing in like 2012, mm-hmm. 2013. Um, I was like this young kid teaching DJ. <laughs> I can't believe anybody <laughs> followed those. Um, but uh, the production stuff, I was not the newest, like I wasn't the the only one, like the earliest mm-hmm. doing it, but I was one of the first people doing like comprehensive video series mm. on it, um, at least on Ableton. Um, I knew of I knew of uh, Sadowick and Mr. Bill and Multiplier doing videos on Ableton, mm-hmm. but none of them were like comprehensive. Mm-hmm. And my first like breakaway hit on Ableton was how to write an EDM song from start to finish. Yeah, I've seen um, that one. Yeah, yeah. And that was like, I think one of the first comprehensive start to finish YouTube series on Ableton Live that I know of at least. Mm-hmm. There was FL Studio ones for days. Um, I remember following, I, I had a brief spat with FL and I, I decided I didn't like it. But um, <laughs> I remember there was this channel called Tornado Twins who did FL Studio and unity game engine tutorials and i had an interest in both oh yeah yeah. it was like the the perfect uh perfect marriage back then but um yeah so so i think i was probably one of the earlier ones Mm -hmm. at least the ones doing the comprehensive video series but i wasn't like the first on the platform by far Mm. yeah Yeah. because because it it seems it's so interesting to me that that kind of giving some of that background because i think that today is interesting because there are a lot of people getting into this world where Start. I mean, starting today, you know, 2019, right. doing the, the production stuff on YouTube, there's a lot out there. So it's kind of tough for someone to have their unique voice, you know, give something that's unique in a sense where it can really stick out. I mean, do you think, do you think someone starting today has some kind of more barriers to, to get over? As far as starting on YouTube? Yeah. 
Um, there's a lot more congestion now. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Um, I even run into that in my own tutorials now. Like tutorials that would have done better four years ago, or you know, they they have a lot more to sift through. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to really know your stuff as far as SEO goes and getting your videos to rank high and stuff like that, where it wasn't as big of a deal when there wasn't fifty thousand videos right. and compressors. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. But I mean, I still think it's possible. I think now it's more about creating something engaging than mm-hmm. it is about necessarily, or I should say, presenting the information in an engaging way than it is actually presenting the information r- well. Mm-hmm. Because there's a um, hundred videos of people, you know, teaching you how to use this. Um, but if you can do it in a unique and entertaining way, then you have the advantage. Yeah. Or if you do it exponentially better than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I think you've put that perfectly because that it seems to be like those types of things are so important now because you a, have to know the SEO game. I mean, that is a, that's, that's yeah. a real challenge in itself because yeah, there's, there's so much content out there and, and um, it's something that I find really fascinating because I'm kind of in the early stages of starting this YouTube channel and stuff. So I'm like learning more and more about it. I didn't know anything about SEO a couple, a couple yeah. months ago, you know, it's, it's there, there's, there's a lot to learn out there, but um, it's just, these are the kind of, conversations I love because you, uh, I think to a lot of people and to myself or someone who started and just kept doing it for a long time and just kept right. your craft, kept working at it. And over time it builds and, and things start opening up and different paths open up. And that's, that's the most important part. Yeah. Keeping with it. Yeah, that's for sure. Speaking of which I need to make some YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, um, but yeah, just keeping with it and, and, you know, following that path of wherever it takes you Mm -hmm. that's kind of been my experience over the past like four to five years yeah six seven years (laughs) (laughs) yeah but it's it's so cool man because i know um that's this is it like this is your full-time job and that is such a cool position to be in to teach which is what you love you know to make music and to be a content creator and put these videos out on youtube i mean that's that's a very very cool place to be in that's that's like all I can ask for, really. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more money. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the fact that I'm doing, you know, music and, and teaching and, and perpetuating art full time is, is really the dream come true. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, you know, kind of touching on our first conversation, I, I think, and, and stuff I want to definitely talk about today, but, you know, you talked about first sending music to Mousetrap dead mouse knowing of your music before you were sending right. anything in and now you just uh had finished up at edc you played with the whole mousetrap gang i saw i wasn't there of course but i saw lots of videos Sorry. and it looked amazing yeah. man it was a f- very fun time yeah 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 um i don't know it's been a big experience <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh the past two years have been really quick mm-hmm. uh lots of new music and lots of changes in my life i moved mm-hmm in the past year and a half to my own apartment, different location than last time. Mm-hmm. Although last time wasn't a video, but right, right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. This just life has been very quick lately. Yeah. Uh, EDC was really fun. Um, that was very last second. <laughs> I, I was, I was told by the label manager, like uh, maybe a week out uh, that one of the artists that was going to play, who was just like an opener. Uh-huh. Um, they fell out oh shit and they they needed someone to play it so he hit me up last second and um i was actually on a flight back from maryland um and and i had to go directly i stopped in my house for like 10 hours yeah and then i flew out to vegas for a week you know shit. <laughs> and that's been my life for like the, the past year uh-huh uh just constant travel i'm going to san francisco like in you know, two days, yeah. a day and a half, you know, it's, it's just been a lot of travel and lots of meeting of new people and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You know? how, how do you enjoy the travel? I mean, are you more of like a regimented guy where you want to have time at home to work on tracks? A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a travel guy. Uh, it's been really taxing, mm-hmm. uh, to travel so much, but it's, you know, it's a blessing and a curse. Cause I, I love to meet all the people in every city and and you know go to these really cool events like edc or ultra mm-hmm. I went to ultra uh uh beyond wonderland etc like it's it's always a good time um it's just the process of getting there and how exhausted i feel afterward 
um, that's what really takes the toll on you. But the actual being there and meeting people and seeing the same people you see at every event, yep. you know, it's like you, you start to recognize people and that's always fun. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would just imagine that doing, you know, it's always so cool. I always love these kind of origin stories and we went over it in our first, you know, first talk of like, Hey, where did you start and how this whole thing happened? But, but to talk about that whole process of, you know, kind of starting out and then, uh, releasing on mousetrap. And then I just thought it was so cool that that label is, is really, I think over the last year, putting more emphasis on having these like mousetrap stages or mouse, like people, you know, now there is that EDC. Yeah, think, there's, yeah, yeah. I think even more than music right now, they're really pursuing uh, a live performance aspect. Uh-huh. Um, they did E-Forest, they did Ultra, they did EDC, yep. they did uh, Beyond Wonderland. And it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, that means that we can kind of like weasel our way into these massive, uh, massive uh, festivals. Seriously. Even if we aren't like the biggest artists. So, yeah, I'm... I'm hoping that they put me on things in the future. EDC was awesome. Yeah, dude, I would I would imagine. And I like I saw quite a bit of that. Like I saw that there was the mousetrap stage and then IO was at a I think a pretty big stage from what I saw in some videos. It looked yeah, pretty crazy. He also played he also played one of the main stages. And yeah. So did thirteen actually. Oh wow. Um he's pretty new. Killing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's so cool, man. It, it just talk about like a meteoric rise. <laughs> yeah. IO went from zero to a hundred real quick. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the past two years. Seriously. I remember when I first started hearing that name and I was just like, Oh, who's this guy? Maybe he had, I knew he had that, that remix or he had a remix of Tommy trash or he did a remix with Tommy trash that had a ton of views on Spotify. I was like, I haven't heard any of his other music. Then it was just like, yeah. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> just, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, like I, I actually, the day I met him, I don't know if he likes his name to be out there, but I'll say I.O. Uh-huh. The day I met I.O. Um, was the same day I met Dead Mouse um, at Countdown, and that's the day I got signed to Mousetrap. Oh, okay. And um, that wasn't the first time I met Dead Mouse, but it was the first time I like hung out with him. Uh-huh. And um, I think uh, he was not even I.O. yet, mm-hmm. and that was less than two years ago. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So that really puts into perspective how fast he blew up. Yeah. Um, because I want to say he released after me on Mousetrap, mm-hmm. if not like right before me. Yeah. And he's like already main stage, like playing massive techno yeah. events and stuff. And he's touring all around. Um, good for him to be honest. Totally. It, yeah. it is so funny how those things happen and it's just, you know, certain, whatever it is, you know, the, of course he has amazing music released. He makes amazing music. You can tell super dedicated because he was just sitting on a vault of music that once he started releasing, it was just like every month there was something new coming out. But, but yeah. Incredibly good brand and and management team too. Yeah. Um, I think they're some of the best right now. Uh, but yeah, he, he also, yeah, he employs that like release as much music as you can kind of thing. Uh I'm kind of the opposite of that. Um, I like to let music sit. Uh Um, but apparently it's working for him so it's best for him and that's good for him yeah it, i congratulated him when i saw him at edc i'm like yeah dude you're freaking killing it yeah it's it's got to be and it's so cool for for people out there and i just think about being at a stage with myself with my music or people starting out like he he was i know making music under a different name before so it's not like he just started mm-hmm. making music that blew up you know like he was yeah. he, you know he's making music for a long time but but when the dedication's there, the time's there, things can just click and it can be like wildfire, you know? And it- 100%. Yeah. yeah. And that's so inspiring and so exciting for people out there that are just working. They're like, I'm just going to keep working on this. I know it's going to come. I know, you know? And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's it's definitely interesting, man. It's it's a fun it's, it's a fun world to be in. It's things like that that make it seem like, yeah, it's possible, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like someone like Rez, I mean- she is also a great example of meteoric rise. Yeah, like the most. Yeah, because only a couple albums, right? Two. If I mean, like she was, she was big before her first album came out. Yeah, um, and that was off of an EP or something. Right. Like she, she, she blew up quick too. Yeah. And she's still big. Oh yeah. And that's a and that's a testament too. Like if you can blow up and then stay relevant. Yep. That's that's good because a lot of people come up really quick and then fizzle. 
Um, but she's r- remained and that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's pretty incredible. I, I just, I love seeing those things. Cause it just, for me, it just makes me excited. You know, it's just, there's, there's opportunity yeah. there. And then at this whole, you know, in the middle of this whole thing, people have the ability to reach out, send music to either people like yourself who are on record labels. And if you guys like it, you're like, you're going to put them in the right direction yeah. or A&R is there. I mean, people can find it like, Hey, I guess just emailed the A&R for mousetrap, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, hey. back, back when he was on. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, or Hey, here's back my, when he was sending them. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, crazy shit happens, <laughs> but, um, it's funny because another thing that was was interesting I wanted to talk about was right after I well we had talked and then maybe it was ten episodes after that something like that uh, Desa came on and I didn't know yeah. yeah I didn't know you guys were working on music or anything he's like oh yeah funny you mentioned Julian we're working on a couple of things and now since then you have you know the release where he remixed um, uh, my song Touch Touch yeah. and then you have Cold Outside yeah yeah right. Yeah, ah, it's funny, man. Like the smallest world. Yeah, seriously. Um, I discovered Derek like maybe a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was pitching uh, touch around to a certain labels. Um, someone directed me to Zero Three, and Zero Three is amazing. Yeah, I love them and their whole team. Um, but they they really wanted a remix done for the song. So I said like, rather than me trying to you know fish through my artists that i know would do a good remix or like mousetrap guys i i said you guys can handle it and i let them choose deza uh-huh. um and great choice it was yeah yeah uh, he he killed it and i think the remix is is doing really well still oh, yeah. it's like on um well i don't know one of the spotify playlists for trance or whatever and mm-hmm. a state of trance and all that and um yeah we met from that he loved the touch and then Shortly after we wrapped up his remix for Touch, uh, we started working. He sent me the original. It was a, just the piano and the vocals of Cold Outside. Mm-hmm. And I wrote, I think I wrote that that big drop, the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I wrote that uh, and I sent it back. And he was like, I was not expecting like that style from you. And, and we kind of just... Uh, you know, sent it back and forth and, you know, here we are. Now we've called outside. So, yeah. um, it's kind of a departure from both of our styles. It's more like Eric Prids mm-hmm. than, than my like progressive electro stuff. And it's more Eric Prids than his <laughs> like, uh, like, you know, progressive chuggy tech trance stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, it's, it's a really good marriage of the two, I think. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. Um, I love both the track. I mean, I love that track and I love his remix. Do you foresee things happening in the future together? I mean, it seems like it's a really unique sound and it, it's doing so well. You guys are like a a cool team. Yeah. We, we, we for sure want to work on music in the future. Yeah. Um, right now I'm, I'm, I'm working on, you know, larger projects. I'm trying to finish music of my own. Mm -hmm. I think he just wrapped his album up. So like, we're kind of busy in our own lanes, but, um, soon, I think down the line we'll we'll have something together again. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a really cool um you know person to look at in this world too because he's so open about this process of just working really hard for a really long time, you know? And yeah. I love that kind of stuff cuz he's like totally open about it. He's like, "Dude, I I work, you know, 4 days on and I have no time to work on music when I'm doing that and then I have 3 days off, I just work on music." And I do that on repeat until, you know, for years and years and years. And it's, of course, he makes amazing music. But I feel like right now he's getting a, like, a lot's happening for him right now, which I... He's fine. Yeah, he's finally seeing, like, a big explosion of, yeah, you know, success, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, after he's been doing this since, like, 2007 or yeah. 8. Like, it's really crazy how long and how dedicated he's been. And I'm really proud of him that... His album's doing so well. Yep. This new one, Cosmos. Yeah, it's crazy. He's like, if you go, I don't know if it's still there. I, I, it may very well be, but I know there's a time where you could go on iTunes and look at electronic music, and it was like the, uh, you know, advertised album on electronic music on oh, iTunes. Yeah, That's Cosmos. pretty crazy. Yeah. I, I remember I screenshotted that. It was so sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, and it was like right on iTunes front page. Right. Yeah, man. Cool. I, I love those kind of stories. And I, I just love 
that dedication to a craft and it takes time. Like it, it just, it does. However, however it happens, even if they're these kind of meteoric, uh, you know, explosions, uh, th but there's some back end where people are working really, really hard, you know, and it just, um, I don't know. I just, yeah, I love, I love seeing that man. And then, so moving forward, I know we're kind of like partway into the year, but, um, I mean, what else is good? So you have music you're kind of working on, try, you kind of have some releases coming up. Maybe can talk about, maybe can't. Um, what about tutorial stuff? I know you had the Sonic Academy tutorial, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I'm working on, I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, it's just a larger body uh -huh. of work. It's not just, I'm kind of, I'm at a point now where I've made like five EPs and I've done like so many singles. I want to work on something larger. Um, it might just end up being a large form EP, like some of Nomana's stuff. Uh -huh. Um, it might end up as an LP. I'm not sure yet. Um, don't have a lot of details on it yet. Cause it's, again, it's just in the beta stages right now, uh -huh. alpha. Um, but it's, it's coming along and, and I'm really trying to channel all of my influences from the past um, and what I grew up on as far as music goes into this project. So I don't know, something special and something a little bit more involved than just like a four track EP, uh -huh. I think is what I'm working on right now. As far as singles go, I mean, they're always coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there'll be, there'll be new music before you know it. Um, but I am working on something bigger. Mm-hmm. Just I don't have a timeline for it. Yeah, because it's yeah. That's the best way to have and it. And then it, it, and then keep, tutorials. Yeah. You know, um, whenever I'm not touring, I try to make <laughs> a tutorial. <laughs> so so I'm 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 planning like a from start to finish course. Mm -hmm. That's I've been saying that for months. Uh huh. Um, but I've been traveling for months. So um, as soon as I'm finished with the San Francisco show, I have like a few months of time where I'm not moving. And um, that's when I'm really going to dial in and try to make a new course. Cool. Um, and that's just going to be me. I'm not trying to partner with anyone for that one. Just like something I can put on YouTube because it's been a long time. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. That's so cool because I think, you know, honestly, you have a great way of breaking down those projects. Like I, I watched uh, in full the one you have on Sonic uh, Academy. Which track was it? Was it Autonomous? No, 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 it was... Uh, it is what it isn't. It is what it isn't. Right, yeah, yeah, that makes it. Yeah. yeah, I remember watching it from start to finish because you had the remix competition around that. That's right. Um, and the the way that you put everything together was amazing. And the fact that you were saying, you know, in, in the track, you're not doing a lot of mixing and mastering. You're trying to set it up in the DAW when you're laying everything together kind of in an advantageous way so you don't have to do a lot of crazy yeah. post-processing. That's always been my method, um, at least since I've known what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I try to, I write so I don't have to mix and I mix so I don't have to master, mm -hmm. um, at least to the extent of others. Yeah. Um, and also, I, I like to use sounds that are inherently compatible with one another. Um, I try to approach it from like a, a band view where like every instrument has its own space. Mm -hmm. um, like you have a bass guitar and a guitar and a vocal for a reason. They aren't just random. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas in electronic music, you can add 50 instruments and try to squish them together. Um, and you end up with like botched versions of every one of those 50 instruments trying to you know, surgically cut things out so they all fit. Yeah. So I approach it from like a traditional background of like every instrument has its own space in the sonic spectrum so that there's no reason for you to uh, have to try to, you know, cut things and, and you know, go super surgical on the mixing, you know, stage. Um, and that's always been my philosophy of like keeping it simple and, and mixing or writing so you don't have to mix and sound designing so you don't have to mix and then mixing so you don't have to master. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it makes sense. And, and I, I love it because a person can listen to a track like that and it's beautiful and, and it's, it, right. yeah. And it, it's just, it seems like from a, maybe a newer perspective, like a, tackling a project like this is going to be a lot of work. Like it's going to be very time consuming, but you can make 
a track sounds so beautiful and it really is so simplistic when you break it down in the DAW. And right. I mean, that's, that's beautiful in itself to be able to right. create something so unique and, and sound so, so good and it to be so simple. Yeah. I think the core elements of the song probably com- com- compressed down to maybe like four or five channels. Right. Like those are the main ones. And then there may be 30 channels of like little bells and whistles, but if you really broke it down, there's probably five to 10 channels that are essential. Yeah. And I think that's like, that's like, uh, probably I would imagine I would wager that it's probably the same for dead mouse and Eric Pritz. Yeah. Um, and those kind of guys, I think there's not a ton going on. It's just the instruments they choose and the way they write it. Yeah. That makes it so good. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I, I, I love that. Sometimes it's that simplicity in everything in the track that allows for that. I mean, Dead Mouse is a master of that. You know, you can have a few yeah. things going on and just the elements there and the melody there makes for something no one else can do. Like, yeah, if you listen to like Avaricia, yeah. for example, I think it's probably four channels, yeah. five channels. <laughs> like, like the whole song, it's just the way that he designed the sounds to fit together and, you know, the placement of the notes, it, it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. Man, that that's cool. So, I mean, last time since we've spoken, have you? Um, I know he's. I guess what I'm saying is, it seems like there's a lot of people that will get signed on Mousetrap, but he's always kind of aloof. Like no one really chats yeah. with him. He's he's tough to kind of pinpoint. I mean, uh, is he still yeah, that yeah. way? He's still just as uh, like a spiritual entity <laughs> that we can't reach than he was two years ago for me. Uh huh. Um, I've had a few run-ins with him. Like there was a mousetrap barbecue mm-hmm. that we had and I, I said hi. Um, and I, I saw him at this gaming event like a year ago, uh-huh. but like I'm not texting Joel and I don't think anyone <laughs> is on the label short of the people that are already friends with him. Like yeah. feed me. So I don't know for better or for worse. He's kind of in his own little lane. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you know, to be fair, he's like an older guy now and he's like has a completely different life than a lot of us. So it, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really, yeah, you're right. He is, is, um, he's been doing this for a long time, you know, and he, he's yeah. probably looking at it and, and yeah, he does. He kind of, like, yeah, I yeah. think he's like almost 50. I think he's like 49 or something. Freaking old man. Yeah. Getting old. <laughs> I just turned 30, dude. I'm feeling old. It's weird. Yeah, uh, it's not old. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, it, it's, it's still regardless. I mean, so cool just to be able to, to have uh, accomplished this chat with him from time to time. Cause you know, so many people that, um, come up in electronic music, almost start listening to dead yeah. mouse. He brings so many people into electronic music, is, especially production. Yeah. Especially historically. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know about now. Yeah. Maybe now. I don't know. I don't know what kids are listening to now, but, um, <laughs> between the era of like 2007 to 2000. 13 or 14 he yeah. was like the guy to start with um and that's pretty cool to be associated with that oh yeah yeah man that is that's amazing yeah because because um for myself and i mean this the story is across the board of so many people he was he was the first guy i listened to and this was like 2008 and then just just been from there on out just a huge fan it's crazy it's crazy yeah man. i'm excited I would, I would, yeah I've been a fan since probably 2009, yeah. 2010. Um, I got in right at like 4X4. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, that yeah. explains my like tastes. Uh-huh. <laughs> a lot of people really like the progressive mouse. Yeah. I'm really more into the electro techno mouse. Yeah. 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 I, I remember uh, the first, it's funny, man. It was like, yeah, like 2008. I remember hearing, um, I remember, and that track for me was just mm-hmm. like, game i I was like what is this genre what is this and then it was just yeah diving into dead mouse and cascade i mean i I don't listen to a lot of cascade anymore but he has some albums that are amazing i um i i kind of back cataloged that stuff like i I listened back through it after i knew of him um i really fell in love with this stuff like some chords uh raise your weapon uh you know stuff from that era uh I think Cthulhu sleeps. Uh huh. And then I went back and I listened to like, for lack of a better name yeah, and, yeah. and random album title. Um, and you know, I, I appreciate the prog stuff, but I'm definitely more into the electro and the more like high energy stuff that he's done. Um, and then cascade, like you were saying, I think I, I heard, um, atmosphere and I also heard strobe light seduction, strobe light seduction. Yeah. During, 
during, when I was going back and revisiting Dead Mouse, I think those are the two that really like stuck out to oh, me. And I, yeah. and I, I, I think I have them on CD actually. Yeah. That was, was a great, throwback. that was one of my first albums. Yeah. 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 He, uh, yeah. I remember seeing him in Phoenix and it was like the tiniest club and we were front row. Cause not a lot of people were there. I mean, this was like 10 years ago, something, something like that. And I was right there and it's, it's this tiny club. And then just to see, and he was, he was pretty famous at the time, but just to see that he's, you know, headlining EDC and he was then too, but he's continuing to headline EDC. It, yeah. It's, it's so crazy. I, I saw one thing, um, there was like that issue with EDC. I guess he didn't play this year cause they like closed down a, didn't they close down a, one of the, uh, one of the stages I thought due to uh, wind or something. Yeah. I, I think, um, Cascade was supposed to play at like midnight or one or something. Uh huh. And they the the wind was so bad they closed down the main stage. Yeah. It actually kind of worked in our favor because the mousetrap stage got this slew. Oh people. nice. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. were right next to the main stage. Uh-huh. Um so I think during IO and Nomana said it was uh-huh. like actually like insanely packed. Yeah, yeah. Um but that sucks. I would have liked to see in Cascade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's... I did see Dead Mouse. That was cool. Oh yeah, I saw videos of that. I yeah yeah. How was that? I mean, seeing Dead it Mouse. It was is... it was cool. I mean, like I, I I feel like I've seen I I saw the same set in Ultra. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Largely, uh, he played um, Channel Forty Two. Uh huh. From album title goes here, which is my favorite album of his. Uh huh. Um, and that was cool to see live. I've never seen it live. Um, but other than that, I was like, okay, I already saw it at Ultra. It was largely because I was going with Systemis. Yep. And um, he wanted to see Dead Mouse because he's never seen, or maybe he'd never seen like the new set. So um, we went to see that. I really wanted to see Above and Beyond. Oh, were they playing at the same Above and Beyond playing during Dead Mouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really bad planning. It's tough. It's tough with these big events because they have, you know, three or four main huge stages. And it's like, how do you balance everything? I feel like that's especially bad, though. That is, yeah. Those two are like the heads of the best labels in Prague. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, it was kind of a rough booking there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's it it is it is always challenging, man. It it's funny that way. But um but yeah, seeing Dead Mouse is is I think it, it's a tough choice to make, but I feel like Dead Mouse is the <laughs> is the go to. I saw his new uh the the V or no, no no. Actually no. He has the new cube. I have not yet seen it live. I saw um, it at Ultra. Oh yeah, how is that? It's pretty cool. Um it's very cool. Uh, it's I prefer the Cube Two actually. Uh huh. Um, the the rotating spectacle is insane. Uh huh. The thing it, it turns and it flips and stuff, and that's really cool. Yeah. But um, I'm a sucker for the Cube Two because it's like the the big version of the small the the old one. Right. 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 Um, but yeah, it was pretty incredible. Uh, it's kind of like a he a greatest hits, if you will. He played like Raise Your Weapon and Sophie Needs a Ladder. I think Sophie came, comes out too. Uh huh. It was cool. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, man. He he puts on incredible sets. I saw. Yeah, I saw uh, V two when he was in Arizona last, and he's coming back to Arizona. We have tickets already, but it's not till like September, and it's just a Dead Mouse show, which I've never actually been to. I've seen him at festivals. Oh, festivals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's going to be a whole whole other experience. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I I. I think the last one I saw was like 2016. It's uh-huh. been a minute. Yeah. I've seen just Dead Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one other thing that I, I, I wanted to talk about is the other release you have for 2019 is with uh, with Mr. Bill, with the Electricado. Yeah. Uh, Rima, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how was that whole process? Because, I mean, working with them must be incredible. You've known a Mr. Bill for a long time because you're in the yeah. same space. Um, same, same, same tutorial space. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh-huh. Um, they think this is like my first thing with Bill, but we've been working together since like 2015. Uh huh. Um, it's it's always a pleasure working with him. He's the most technical producer I think I know. Um, we finished that song probably a year ago. Okay. <laughs> um, it, we, it just took forever to come out and get the logistics behind it together. Yeah. Um, I, they wanted to put it on that EP, which was not finished and. Mm-hmm. Yada yada. It's been done like a year, um, but it was really fun to write. Uh, I think he, they sent me like a 
a techno song or something. It was very different from when I when I got it, and then I added that little catchy melody that did it, did it, did it, did it, did and then they're like, yeah, we like the direction we're gonna work. Like, we'll we'll expand upon it. And then, uh-huh. whenever you work with Mr. Bill, you send him the song, and it comes back a totally different song. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, that happened about three times, four uh-huh. times, and then now we're at the you know the final version. I think I always end up adding something ridiculous, just like, okay, I, if you're gonna change it completely, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. And I added that. I added that big like '80s section at the end. Uh huh. Like it, uh, there's, I think I added that lead, like the, um, and, and then I sent it back to him and he added the whole, like, like the contrasting switch up. Uh huh. Um, and then I continued it and did that like DX seven, like bell Fleetwood Mac kind of outro. (laughs) Uh And we're like, yeah, we have to keep it in the song now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, that's probably my favorite part of the song. Uh, yeah, it was always it's always a good time working with Bill, and um, this is my first time working with. No, I I take that back. It's my second time working with Ryan, uh-huh. but um, Ryan's the other electric auto guy. Uh, but yeah, it's always a good time working with him. Yeah, he he would I would imagine be such an interesting guy to work with because as you mentioned, so technical. The mm-hmm. music is he. Whole, has no boundaries. He's just like whatever. He he throws in so yeah. many different genres, so many different in, influences into the music, and it's all so technical. It must just be a trip. But I, I feel it's like it's always fun. Yeah, like when like we did collab alliance in 2016, and uh-huh. I I remember he was like messing with time signatures and stuff, like going off of the the grid intentionally, um, off the meter. Uh-huh. I guess the correct term is and and. It's it's like fascinating listening to his music, even like his Mr. Bill project, because of how weird and out there it is. Yeah, um, and that's the thing I really appreciate most about working with him uh, is that it kind of puts you out of your comfort zone and and really pushes your technical limits every time you work with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I mean, I think you guys as a team is so interesting teaming up on tracks, and of course with Ryan too, with with Electricado. But because yeah. you have such a technical presence in the doll, like I think of the track Autonomous, it is so, it's <laughs> it's like melody driven, but also technical. It's like this perfect fuse, and then you yeah. you throw that in there, and it just makes for a really really interesting track. Yeah, Autonomous is kind of like my Mr. Billy kind of song. Uh-huh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I generally approach songwriting very, like, traditionally. Mm-hmm. Like, it is what it is in, or, like, those sort of songs where um, my tracks with Bill are very, like, experimental and, and cool. And that's the, what I really appreciate working with him for. Really, like, stretches my musical legs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I'm, I, that must be kind of being at this stage too with music that must be so fun because i think a person making music for a long time can can start to think like okay what's next you know i, I kind of feel like i have a ceiling with what i can do with what i can make and then boom you work with someone right. like that and you're like oh no there's a whole other <laughs> world <laughs> that you can go into yeah i don't know if i've ever hit like a ceiling uh-huh um i don't know i i i, I really enjoy just like writing melodies and stuff Mm -hmm. uh that's like my excelling point Mm -hmm. um so i never really get bored with music Mm -hmm. because i kind of see technical stuff as a secondary um but it's definitely fun when you when you kind of exaggerate the technical side and put the music in in like the back burner um and that's always the result of working with bill or any of those technical guys no man is kind of similar oh yeah yeah have you worked on tracks I, with him? I've worked on some stuff with him. I like not serious. It'll never come out. And uh-huh. It's not even like songs. We worked on some stuff when I visited him at his place, like a, about a year ago. Um, yeah, yeah. He, I think he's like Bill, but he's not as intentional as Bill. Like Bill knows exactly what he wants. Uh-huh. He, he does like these very specific things. Um, Jordan is as fast as Bill is, like incredibly fast and optimized. Um, but I think he's more experimental. Mm. Like he he tries things to see how they sound more than, whereas Bill literally is is like so like dialed into exactly what he's going for. Yeah, yeah. I've heard with that's at least my experience. I I don't know how he works all the time, but uh-huh. when I when I talk to him, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard he does. 
I don't know. I, I heard this from someone where he does like a demo a day, something like that. Like he'll put out, he'll work on something new every day. And it's almost like an idea of some, I don't know the validity of that, but I've heard he's I, really, really fast. I honestly don't know, but uh, I will say that when I was working with him, it was me, Eddie, Enzo Bennett, and him yeah, in yeah. the studio like about a year ago. And we we were gonna take turns writing this thing and, and um just you know, like hop on. Those those guys are, are FL guys, me mm-hmm. and Matt are Ableton. And I let him start and he just banged out this like entire track <laughs> idea in like three minutes and then like he's like, Okay. Here you, you go. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Um but yeah, that kind of is a testament to how fast he writes. Yeah. Um, but that's a good thing. So. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And I can be kind of similar, but it's 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 in a very different way. Mm-hmm. Like I I can bang out a melody, I like an entire arrangement's worth of of melodic ideas in like five minutes. Like mm-hmm. I'll set the I'll set the, the Ableton recording and then I'll record on piano uh-huh. and then I'll shift to the next channel and write the bass and then I'll shift to the next channel and write the lead and I'll have the whole song's worth of melodies, content, uh-huh. melodic content finished um, quickly. But he actually, his stuff's very different because it's not as, as melody driven. It's right. more like, you know, so so he comes up with these like incredibly cool like loops uh-huh. of, 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 of like the drop, if you will, and, and very quickly. Uh-huh. Whereas I see that secondary yeah Yeah. dude when you're working on stuff like that so you mentioned like you can set record and then you'll you'll do the kind of foundational chords melody bass etc what's that process like for you is it just i i mean just kind of in that creative space like when do you feel like these ideas come to you most easily or is it just happen chance is it just kind of tinkering with a couple chords and then something will click yeah like okay I, I, I have yet to have like a time where I can't come up with something. Uh huh. Um, I generally just hop on the piano and play for like 20 minutes until I come up with something. Mm-hmm. Um, and if not that, then I'll, I'll use like a tried and true chord progression or something first. Yeah. And then I'll, then I'll layer on top of that to make it more interesting. Like I'll invert the chords or I'll, or I'll add like interesting notes, like the, a seventh or a, or a third or whatever to make it different. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I generally can come up with a chord progression pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I just start by, you know, noodling on piano and I always try to come up with a chord progression first because then you'll find your bass is just the root of your chord an octave down or mm. knock two octaves down or whatever. And then your your lead can be like an arpeggiation of the, of the, or arpeggiated version of the same chord or, you know. Something that fits within that. Pentatonic yeah. scale over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's always something that's so interesting to me because it at times seems like it's hit or miss. I mean, sometimes things are flowing, sometimes it's just like brick wall, you know? And yeah. uh, I like that idea of kind of going towards some tried and true progressions that you know. It, it It's funny for that reason too, because there are some progressions that are in like so many tracks, you know? So there's some things yeah. a person can go to and be like, okay, this is a starting point at least, you know? And then see what can build off it from there. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Like- a lot of pop music is based on the same six progressions, right? Five, four progressions, um, and you know they all sound relatively different out yeah. of the context of if you actually compare them. Um, yeah. Like if you take, I mean, obviously, if you take the songs and you literally just play them next to each other and you transpose them and stuff, they're going to sound like the same progression. But out of the context of the progression, they'll sound very different. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Oh, if, yeah. If, if it's good, then it works, then it's fine. Exactly. Um, I have this one comparison a lot of people make is uh, the first like three notes of It Is What It Isn't mm-hmm. is kind of similar to the bass line of Avaricia. Okay. But it's like such a standard. Right. It's, it's like, a- it's like a, you know, a minor chord. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. just like there's about 5,000 songs that have that same right. exact progression. It's, it's not intentional. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that it's funny. You mentioned that because there will be like, when you talk about common por- chord progressions in songs, like you can listen to, uh, you know, someone like Zed who is, you know, makes these pop EDM anthems and you can pull out the chords. You're like, I've heard these chords in other songs, but it's like the little differences, especially in the vocal yeah. melody that like, 
take it from, okay, this is fine. This is an interesting right. idea to boom. This is a beautiful, very thing. interesting. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I try to shoot for. I, I, I make, it's kind of like a meme now that I, like most of my writing is based on counterpoint melody mm-hmm. or harmony. Um, and, and like I add like an upwards of like three to four counter melodies in every song, mm-hmm. um, whether they be harmonies of the same counter melody or a new one. Um, and that's like you're saying with Zed, uh, the accessory melodies aid the chords in such a way that the chords are no longer the focus of the song and it doesn't sound like that same progression. Yeah. It sounds totally different with the context of a different lead top line melody on it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I think that's when when something goes from being very... You can go, I guess, I guess you can go on YouTube. I've done this and you can look at how people will break down songs like that, you know, in the, at the theory level. And, you know, that's when it goes from this kind of educational theory standpoint to something genius and beautiful when it's those little variations that put it into a, a totally different category, you know? And exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and another guy that I think fits really well in that conversation is Lane eight. Cause he can have such a very simple, um, you know, arpeggiation, right? With like very, but then how he brings in the bass line over, you know, a minute, yeah. it it takes it and it 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 totally changes what unexpected what's, bass yep. note that you wouldn't expect in the context of a uh, arpeggio or a, a minor chord arpeggio or whatever he does, you know, right? Like that's that's what makes it special to me. Um, it's not necessarily the a truly unique chord progression like dead mouse a lot of his stuff is very weird oh yeah um but i'm more into like write something traditional and then work on a counter melody that that makes it interesting because then it's it's automatically nostalgic and yeah relatable like um porter robinson and maddion mm-hmm. i always reference them um they're kings of that their their format is literally like the most basic pop format, but they yeah. have these extremely catchy melodies that they play throughout the song. Yeah. Or at least open the song and then in the drops that make the song. Yeah. Um, but if you actually broke it down, it's like, like, you know, your first piano lesson. Right. Chords. Oh yeah. 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 And, and some of those leads are so, so simple, but it's just perfect and it, mm-hmm. it fits and it. And in that simplicity, that's when it, you know, it doesn't take, a million different things happening at once. Mudding up a track and mudding up an idea is going to pull away from it. It's that simplicity. Like, um, yeah. oh, shoot. I remember listening to the, you know how Porter had the uh, release that in each track, he would kind of talk a little bit about how he went through the production. Of each. Uh, yeah, commentary. Yeah. yeah, the commentary piece. And I forget the track in particular, but the 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 introductory melody is is quite simple, but he said he put something like, a hundred hours just into that track and I mean, it makes sense because it comes out and it's beautiful but it's beautiful in that simplicity i think yeah. that's that's the key to writing that sort of stuff is come up with something like a counter melody that's so or a, a top line melody that's so catchy mm-hmm. um that's the real ticket the progression itself is not yeah. um coming up with a melody that'll stick in your head and it loops so well yeah like a uh, slip by dead mouse is a oh yeah example. like i can sing that all day or or uh you know any porter robinson song <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 worlds was iconic i mean that was just that's that, my favorite album yeah changed the game and i i actually i think i put him as number one uh-huh. as far as my biggest influences and people i look up to the most yeah uh, yeah he's like my biggest uh, influence and idol have you sure. met have you met him I have not met Porter. No. no. Oh, That's man. like a big goal. <laughs> It'll happen for sure. I mean, for sure, for sure. I mean, Mousetrap keeps yeah. keeps putting on these events where all the Mousetrap guys are going and playing at different uh, different big events. It's going to happen. He's more doing virtual self stuff now. Does he still? Yeah. Or I guess he tours. Does he tours Porter still? Or is he just doing virtual self now? I think he's focused on V self right uh-huh. now, but I think he's going to be shifting back to Porter if he releases something under Porter oh, or maybe a third be... alias or something. Yeah. Yeah. Thing I like about him and that I admire most about him, like we we're saying earlier, I'm, I'm more, I'm not just a musician. I'm into a lot of creative mediums. And what I admire most about Porter is that he is 
has a vision for every project he works on. Mm -hmm. And it's not just music. It's, it's the visuals and it's the live experience and a theatrical experience in a way, um, a story and, and something more surrounding the music, whether that be like, you know, the music videos or the live show or Mm -hmm. the really in depth live show with like mashups and stuff and, and, cultural references like legend of zelda and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and that's what i admire most about him is it's not just music and he does that for every project that he works on whether it be like um worlds or virtual self Uh uh they're both really developed ideas and very distinct uh visual audible and and like i guess sensory brands that's why i really like about him and i think he's a visionary in that regard where Someone like Dead Mouse, which I really love their music, um, he doesn't have that same level of uh, storytelling, to right? His stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. That that is a very interesting point. Dead Mouse, it's all about you know, it's all about the track. There's not a lot of yeah. other visual components, but I, I mean, Porter fascinates me, man, because because even before Worlds, he put out that Spitfire, yeah, and that was totally a different genre. And I think he was pretty young when he did that too. I think like. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's even 20 yet. Or I that might was, be wrong. Yeah, that was, um, I think, the first release on Ausla. Yeah. I want to say. It was incredible. And, and he was young, yeah. Very young. I think he's like in his mid-early 20s right <laughs> yeah, now. So yeah, like, I'm like, yeah. That hurts Jesus, my brain. I, gotta, I know, I got to catch up. Um, yeah, when I start thinking about that, I'm like, oh my God. you know. But then I always find these guys who are like later in life, starting their thing, whatever it is. I'm like, okay, I just, okay. it'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> But that's like definitely someone I model myself after as yeah. far as where I foresee myself in the next few years is I want to be doing something more than just DJ sets and, you know, throw a VJ visuals up. I, I want to have more in-depth uh, visual aesthetic and and um, storytelling elements to my music. And like I was saying earlier, that's kind of something I'm trying to include in my next body of work. Uh-huh. So. That's so cool. When when I uh, there's one thing I wanted to ask earlier when you're talking about the album you're kind of working on, you wanted to pull on all the inspiration really throughout your life musically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've seen you post some things on Instagram where it's not electronic music at all. It's like American football and, and different yeah. indie bands. So is that kind of playing into the inspiration for the music moving 100%, forward? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, cool. So it's without the disclosing too much. It's it's. The new album is going to be like a renaissance of all those styles I've touched the past few years and, uh-huh. and a culmination of all the musical inspirations that I have. Mm. Um, that's like, you know, American football, indie stuff and, yeah. and, you know, rock stuff and industrial stuff and electronic music, obviously. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. A, a lot, of, a ton of 80s influence. My mom, you know, grew up with new wave and industrial around the house, so... I've I've always been into that and uh-huh. like Depeche Mode and that side of stuff, Tears for Fears. So new album you can expect is going to be very diverse in style and you know it's gonna I don't know match my personality I guess. Dude, I love it, man. I I I think that's going to be really really interesting and I'm excited to see where it goes and and um, yeah, man. I I love I love the fact that you're kind of taking this time to put out something big that you're really putting all your creative energy into and you're pulling on everything across the board because it's it's a perfect time to do it man you have you know releases now in mousetrap you've released on other labels like it seems like this is the perfect time to kind of dive into something big you know yeah and i I think personally it's just the right time to do it as well i I, i've been releasing like eps for fun and Uh and singles for fun for so many years i really just want to work on something cohesive and finished i actually started an album in 2014 um, it was a concept album as well that I never finished. I don't mm. know if it'll ever see the light of day, but um, a lot of the tracks that have come out in the past few years have been from that that I've recycled. Uh-huh. But I was, wasn't ready musically or like my maturity wasn't there yet to really work on something like that. But now I feel like I'm at a point in my life and, and in my musical career that I can work on something bigger. Um, whether that be like, again, like a large form EP that has a theme like Spitfire uh-huh. or like a full length LP. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Dude, that's, that's so cool. And, and honestly, I mean, 
I hope it fits in a sense where I guess it fits isn't the right word. If you'd like when around the time that that's coming out, if you want to come back on and do another episode, I love it, man. I would Absolutely. love, I'd love to hear about that creative process and you're really d- diving into something a little bit different and man, I'd love it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's been where I've been at musically for the past six months. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Dude, I'm sure it's going to be amazing, man. I'm, I'm fucking stoked. <laughs> 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 cool man well dude thank you for coming on man this has been awesome absolutely for real dude i always it's like always catching a up good with time you. yeah yeah man again it's just it's a it's a bizarre little world man i reached out to you on instagram like a year and a half ago something like that and now we're Here fucking, we are. we're podcasting <laughs> podcasting round two this time with visuals <laughs> yeah yeah man <laughs> yeah and then we will make sure 100 percent we're gonna do it in person one day i feel horrible next that time happened, but yeah yeah, yeah. cool well, man i'm hoping that'll be soon <laughs> yeah me too dude. Right. me too cool